Morning, YouTube. I'm over at uh, Mike's house today, and we have an interesting project for you. We are replacing his air wipers electric. with electric. Mike's already removed his old air wiper units. Pretty old. I uh, those shafts were. <laughs> I cut them off because they're so rusted on. And uh, they worked okay. They're probably rebuildable, but they're sure noisy when you're going down the road. So, wipers, okay. Yeah. So Mike wants to change the sweep on his wipers. So explain how the old ones worked and what you're doing now. All right, the old wipers just went like between here and here, clicking back and forth. And this was stay wet, and that would stay wet. And so the new ones, you want to do what with so the, the sweep? The new ones, I have nice new replica 1955 Chevy wiper arms with 59 Chevy blades. So these are going to start here. The motor's going to move moved over here a little bit. And they're going to have a nice 120 degree sweep all the way up and over. And then park back in the middle. Nice. All right, let's get after it. Okay, we're removing this chrome strip here. Right. Because uh, we discovered some rust on here. And so, of course, with all bus projects, uh, they always grow beyond what you expect. And we have to do some um, paint scraping. And yeah, we're going to paint this black. And of course, I'm just waiting for one of these screws to be too crustified to cooperate and want to... That's why I'm using the power driver because, man, these things really help with crustified, dissimilar metal, of course. So far, we're doing good here. Uh, we've got a... Harbor Freight scraper tool we're going to use on this. Works really good. That's an old airline from the old wiper. We need to cap those off then, don't we? Yeah, those would get capped off. And when we take the dash apart, we cap them off under there. In your old speed control. All right. Air operated speed control. All right, let's see what mysteries lie underneath the chrome strip here more rust yeah shouldn't ah. be surprised by that we knew there would be that's old seal right there oh man you could just keep going to it'd be like oh now we got to do all this and that and the other thing but we're yeah. just doing this front piece <laughs> for now well Mike's going to recover the dash at some point and then I suppose we'll probably be getting into that other stuff I think we can Pull the dash stuff to recover it. I highly recommend that we finish with your bedroom remodel project before we start tearing apart your dash. All right. So let's just, you know, try and limit. You got to try and limit the scope because next you're, thing you yeah. know, you got, you'll have everything torn we'll, apart in here. We'll save the chrome and set it aside and leave this as it is. And then we'll paint down here and put wipers yep, in. Yep. So okay. Take the strip off over here too. Rust-Oleum product. This is Rust Dissolver. This stuff actually works pretty good. It's kind of a thick gel. And um, it's like Ospho, which is um, phosphorus, I guess. Or, or is it? 
I don't know, it, it basically converts the rust back into metal. Yeah, we just have some surface rust underneath the windshield here. It turns it black. Not bad for 73, five years old, whatever. So this stuff works pretty quick and this gel formula is nice because it kind of clings a little bit better than the OSFO. We, we also have OSFO, we've used this stuff before. Um, you should kind of brush the OSFO on. It. Yeah, and it, it smells like sulfur when it's working. Must be a byproduct. Yeah, we probably are going to have to brush that in. Oh, yeah. Let me get a big towel. So it's uh, the ingredient's phosphoric acid, so it interacts with the, the rust and it turns it black, turns it back into metal conversion coating. Right, we just got back from a very long trip to the hardware store to engineer some stuff for this windshield and the motors and and whatnot. And I let the OSFO do its thing while we were gone. And you can see here that uh, most of the rust has been converted to black stuff here. And we're gonna go ahead and paint this black before we uh, install the new motors and seal up the old holes. Mists on there, oh, those are holes, okay. I wouldn't go too thick on it. You don't want any runs. Get closer. Get closer. You're gonna get it on your dash. Can is in the way. Um, yeah. Over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to come from below, kind of a little bit. Now you're getting it. Take it and let it dry, and put another coat on it. Right. Yeah. Don't want no drips. Yep. Did you get the center thing okay? The center thing going up. Yes, I did. Well, not here. Both sides. should dry pretty quick in the sun. Okay. So we got some of these uh, rubber, flat rubber grommets to fill these existing holes with. These are for the small holes. Should go in that quarter inch hole there. I think we need to get some needle nose on the inside and pull it. I think so. Yeah. Bunk. There you go. Look at that. Good. All right, well, we got these grommets installed on the window here. A little bit of rework on these. Got a little bit better solution for that one, but uh, it's sealed up for now. And the critical thing here was that yes. this, this bolt has to be very flush on the inside because of the um, wiper motor that's going there. And those are the other ends of the grommets sticking in. And Mike's going to go ahead and apply a second coat of the Rust-Oleum hammered black. Now remember, remember, I already got that going, but you, you need to start this one the other direction. I'm so down low. I can get that so you can get in there. Get into see. Oh, nice. Yeah, you're laying on a nice coat there. Yep. Oh, hold your breath. 
<laughs> good, yeah, I was getting a good fan pattern out of that. There you go. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, you gotta get closer. Ah, I'm getting gassed out. <laughs> so these are Mike's uh, new electric wiper motors that he looked high and low for before he found some that would work for what he was trying to do. So you can get these in 12 or 24 volts and left or right parking and you can adjust the sweep. So they come default with a 110 sweep and I think right side parking. But I have, you take them apart, with this four screws, there's a cover and a gasket and you can see the mechanism inside. All these little holes are all marked with how many degrees of sweep you get. There's 110 and the 120, I changed these to 120 because the 120 hole is right there on the other side. But to do that, uh, then you had to take these two screws out and move that over 180 degrees. Unless you wanted left side parking, then I would just leave it on. The other one I did have to do change the plate over. But anyway, so you set your degrees that you want and then you set your left or right parking and then you put your screws back down. And so you were talking about uh, the wiring on these, um, how for the speed you're gonna run them uh, on six volt and well, 12 volt possibly. Well, what I'm gonna do is the, just to be cool, I'm gonna make the park circuit six volts. Okay. Okay, so the 12 volt low, that'll be 12 volts and this one's high. So you have to switch low high, but um, I'm gonna use those Volkswagen resistors that people use on their, when they convert their 12 volt Volkswagens or convert their six volt Volkswagens to 12 volts. Then you use a dropping resistor for the six volt radio and wiper motors. Okay. So I'm gonna do this. So these are gonna sweep. And then we still have to figure out what we're gonna do about your intermittent wiper circuit. Y yeah, so that just gets gives it a pulse to the 12 volt. Right. On, on side, yes. Right, and then the park takes over from there? And park takes over from there. Oh, so that means that your you intermittent... Just, you just pulse it, and then, it, and then it'll give it so a... So your intermittent will operate nice at the 6-volt park speed. Yeah. Ah, uh, interesting. Yeah. All right, so... Well, cool. So we're done for the day, so stay tuned for the install. See you next time. See ya.